Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you receive the praises of your people. We thank you, Jesus, that you receive the worship. Lord, that it comes up before you as an incense, a sweet-smelling Savior. Oh, we thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit that you pour out upon us. We thank you, Father, for the glory of your presence, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are. <laughs> so glorious, so glorious in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, you are in Oh, sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Oh, Lord, fill. Fill every person in this place. Lord, fill every person right now in this place with your glory. Touch every person right now by your might and by your power, by your spirit. Oh, God, draw them to you, Lord, each person. Oh, God, close, close, close. Oh, Jesus, we just want to behold you. We just want to see you. Jesus, 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 Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Well, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you for your sweet, sweet presence in this place. <laughs> oh, we thank you, Lord, that you are a living God. One that inhabits the praises of your people. <laughs> you come and you dwell. You come and you dwell. You come and you dwell where your people praise you. <laughs> Come and you dwell in the praises of your people. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Oh, I think it would be a good time just to rapture right now. <laughs> oh, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. <laughs> he said in Revelation 22, verse 20, Behold, I come quickly. And we say, even so. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. <sighs> to behold you, Jesus, in your beauty and in glory. <laughs> ah! That's why we're here. To see him, to behold him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, glory to you. We thank you, Father, for the fire of heaven in this place right now. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody just shout to the Lord. church here in a minute. <laughs> One full of the Holy Ghost and fire. <laughs> Woo, Jesus! <laughs> Hallelujah. We can just explode with His glory. We can just get beside ourselves in Him tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I'm still stuck on that announcement that the king's coming. <laughs> He's coming and it's soon and very soon. It is so soon. It is so soon. Are you ready to meet him right now? If Jesus was to come at this moment. Are you ready? 
to be caught up in the cloud of glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Oh, reminds me of me teaching Josiah about the coming of the Lord. <laughs> And I said, and he said, he, I would talk, tell him all the time about Jesus coming. And he would say, Nani, when are we going to get to go to heaven? When, are we, when is Jesus going to come and get us? He's about three years old. And he's like, when is he going to come? You keep talking about him. When is he coming? I said, well, God loves the world so much that he wants to give everybody a chance. There's people in other nations and other places that haven't heard the gospel and we must preach the gospel. He said, he's three years old. He goes, to all the islands of the earth, Nani? I said, to every one of them. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Oh, that's the Father's heart. That his glory go forth, that his word go forth to every nation of the earth. And we thank you, Father, that your word goes forth. And Lord, that you raise up labors right here in this place. You raise up labors right here in this place. Right here in this place in Jesus' name. To even go out throughout San Diego because the nations of the earth are right here. And Father God, even send some of us around the world to the other nations. Father, we thank you for what you've opened up in Nepal and the great awakening that's in Nepal right now, Father. We thank you for shaking that country. And we thank you, Father, that it spills over into, into India, into northern India, and it just explodes, the fire ignites, Father, and all the borders of Nepal. Tibet, oh God, Tibet, the place that seems to be so hard. Oh God, we thank you that nothing is too hard for you. Nothing, 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 nothing is too hard for you, Lord. Absolutely nothing. Tibet, Tibet. Tibet shining with the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The soles of my feet tread all around on that nation. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed in that place. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for breaking down all the hindrances. We thank you, Jesus, for breaking the power of religion that is there. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for your glory being revealed. Father, I just ask you to touch every missionary that is there right now with the fire of your glory. Every missionary for the gospel of Jesus Christ that is in Tibet right now. Father, just explode them in your glory. Touch them, encourage them, strengthen them, and do them, empower them, oh God. Hallelujah. Strengthen them, Father. Father, we thank you for the nations of the earth. We thank you, Father, that you give us the heathen for our inheritance. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name. Oh, praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Oh, Lord Jesus, as Pastor Mark and Ann are in China right now, Father, we just ask you, Father, to shake China. Father, just because they're there. Father, that the glory of the Lord just began to be revealed mightily in Hong Kong. Lord, Hong Kong needs a sweeping revival of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for Hong Kong. Oh, Father, the, the thousands upon millions of souls that are right there in Hong Kong. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father, revival. Revival fire. Hallelujah. Father China, oh Father China for Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, every missionary that is in prison right now, Father, just explode your glory on the inside of them. Strengthen them, empower them, do them. Oh, Father, God, and those that need to be released, release them. And those that are preaching the gospel and bringing souls into the kingdom right in prison, Father. Lord Jesus, you work forth your glory and then protect them and keep them, oh God, that they can go forth and declare the gospel again, Lord, once they're released throughout China. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we praise you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Ooh, Jesus, mm, mighty God, you are so good. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, 
Jesus. So, so next Sunday, we will have an amazing guest speaker here. <laughs> His name is Don Clower. Praise you, Jesus. And he traveled with A.A. A. Allen. And if you don't know anything about A.A. A. Allen, he was, he was a mighty man of God, used powerfully in signs and wonders and miracles. And Don traveled with him, so he's got to be on up there. Because A.A. A. Allen, I'm thinking late 30s, early 40s. And so we want to tell everybody He'll be here Sunday morning and Sunday night. And we just thank you, Father, that the glory of your presence will be revealed in this place. Hallelujah. So we want to come hungry and desperate and thirsty. To see. <laughs> to. Oh. <sighs> Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well. I suppose if you want to sit down, you can. <laughs> oh, thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> he come that our joy might be fulfilled in him. <laughs> And I'm just pretty happy about it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm up here. I'm not sitting there. I think I better stay here. <laughs> oh, thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, But as it is, it is written, <laughs> eye is not seen, <laughs> neither ear is heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things that the Father has prepared for us. <laughs> oh, the things that the Father has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his Spirit by his spirit on the inner man <laughs> he makes alive what he has done he reveals his glory we can't understand it we can't see it the eye can't comprehend it our ears can't contain it but God reveals it to us by his Holy Spirit the mind can't figure it out but the spirit imparts to the spirit when the spirit is made alive <laughs> and it's become spirit and life on the inside of us God reveals them to us by His Spirit. The Lord reveals them by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches the deep things of the heart. <laughs> the deep things of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 now. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of him which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Hallelujah, Jesus. We have not received the spirit of the world. You have not received the spirit of the world. We've come out of the world. Hallelujah. We have not received the spirit of the world. We're done with the spirit of the world. It is over. It's finished. Now we're in the spirit of the realms of glory. The spirit of heaven. The spirit that the Father has imparted unto us. But the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given unto us of God that we might know that we might be partakers 
It's more than just know, but it's be a partaker. You can look at food on a plate, and it can look extraordinary, beautiful. You can smell it. You can know that it has got to taste good. But until you taste it, until you eat it, you will not know for sure. They could have stuck something bitter in there. You will not know for sure. You are a partaker once it's taken in on the inside of you. You have taken it in. We have taken it in by the Spirit. We receive the engrafted Word of God by the precious Holy Spirit, and it's taken in (laughs) as we receive what He has done for us. As we worship Him and we give ourselves to Him, He pours Himself out on us. As we look upon His Word and we feast upon His Word, we become partaker of it because we're partaker of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost brings it and reveals it to us, makes us partaker of His Word causes us to know the things that are freely given unto us by God, which things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Not man's wisdom. It's not man's ability. It's not any man's ability to stand up and minister the Word of God and it go on the inside of you, but when the Holy Spirit is ministering, when He's ministering by His Spirit, It's an impartation. And then you just be a ready vessel to receive. You have that ground, your heart ready and prepared to receive the word. And it goes down on the inside of you. And faith is produced to believe and to walk it out by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost teaches us comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit. The natural man can't comprehend it. The natural man will try to sit and work it out. It is not a math problem on paper. It's not calculus. It's not anything that we can work out. It's not physics. We don't have to worry that we can't, there's very few of us that can, can comprehend physics. We don't have to worry about it because we don't have to work it out. Because the most holy, righteous, eternal, mighty God imparts it to us freely. And he shows and reveals us all things. He reveals his glory to us on the inside of us by his Holy Spirit. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, neither can he know him, them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all, judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that they may instruct him? But we have, we have, the mind of Christ. That is what God has done for us. He has taken away our ability so completely that he's given us the mind of Christ. And he wants us to walk in the mind of Christ and not in our own ability, but in his ability, by the Holy Ghost, fulfilling all of his purposes and plans here in this earth, receiving all that he would love to pour out upon us if we would just be sponges, soaking it up. If we would just put our attention on the things of the kingdom and not on things of this life, on the things of this world that would distract us, that would hinder us, that would keep us out of the realms of glory. If we will just put our attention there, he wants to pour into us all the realms of heaven. He wants to reveal the height, the depth, the length, the breadth. He wants us to know all the things of God. The Holy Spirit has come to reveal the Father. The Holy Spirit has come to reveal Jesus. And we can have it all. His word is true. Let every man be a liar. God's word is true. There is so much more. There is so much more. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3,
Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also have, has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. The, I, the, you got to do list. You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to. I got to, I got to try. I got to do this. I got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. That letter of, you know, let me get it all in order and set it. Let me do it. There's no life there. There's no life in the rules and the regulations. There's no life. The life is in the spirit where the spirit says, come with me, let me take you over into the realms of my glory. And you find yourself fulfilling the purposes and the plans of God. You find yourself living in him because you got a mind that has stayed on the realms of the heaven. You are living in that realms of the spirit. You are hearing the voice of the spirit that is revealing the deep things of God. But, it, but, but if the ministration of death written, the ministration of death written and engraved in stone was glorious, it was glorious, and you think about that, you take a moment and you think about that, the glory that was revealed when Father wrote with his finger, and he carved it out of stone. <laughs> and Moses came down <laughs> out of the mountain with the glory of, the God, of God on him so powerfully that he, he was shining like a light. You think about that glory when Moses was, you know, because he had tasted. He'd been away with God and he's like, there's more, there's more. And are we there? Are we sitting on the edge of our seat saying, there is more, there is more. I need more, I need more, I need more. And that was Moses. He's like, I need more, I need more, I need more. Oh God, I must behold you, I must see you. And he, and he, he tells the father, he goes, I want to see you in the fullness of your glory. I want to behold you. And Father said, no man can see me and live. And he said, I want to behold you, Lord. I want to behold you. And he said, okay, Moses, because Moses was just so desperate. He wasn't giving up. He was pressing in. He was like, I want to see your glory. He says, okay, I'll come and I'll pass by. And as I pass by, I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock. I'll put my hand over you and I'll cover you because you can't take all the glory of seeing my face. Oh, one day we will see his face. We will behold him in all the glory and all the splendor. Hallelujah. But I tell you, in this time of the law, if it was so glorious, it's what Moses experienced, that God, he, he so, God so revealed himself. God puts his hand over him and he says, you can see my hinder parts when I pass by. And the glory just, took Moses over. The people didn't even want to look at him when he came down off of the mountain. They had to put a veil over him and cover him up because he was shining so bright with the glory of God. <laughs> Under the law! <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Right here. So that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance. Just because he asked. Just because he desperately asked. He would go up in that mountain and forget to come down. He would go up there in the presence of God and forget everything that was going on down below. He was responsible. God had made him in charge of all the people. He had a lot of work to do, and he could have got so caught up in the busyness. He could have been like Martha was. Busy. But no, he was captivated 
from the very moment he stood before that burning bush. From that moment on, before that, he was hungry just to step aside and go see the glory. But after he experienced that glory, he's, I've got to have more. This is what God has called us into when he reveals himself to us. When he pours out his spirit upon us, it's just to make us hungry for more because there is so much more. It's so vast. He is the eternal God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. We haven't even began to step over in the realms of his glorious presence. That glory that they could not look on his countenance, which glory was to be done away with, to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? The time, the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. When Jesus said, it's expedient for you that I go, that the Father send the Holy Ghost that he can reveal all of heaven to you. Do we realize what we have? Do we realize? Do we realize the glory, this glory that God has poured out on us? If Moses' face could shine under that glory, how much more can we shine with the glory of God? What do we allow to hold us out of that place? What do we desire and hunger for? Are we desperate to go deeper? Are we desperate to know him more? Are we desperate for his presence? Is his glory our desire? Are we willing to let go of all the things that we hang on to and we're trying to bring with us? Are we turning around and we grab? So many of us would be a pillar of salt. We think, why in the world did Lot's wife turn around? It was nothing but a wicked city. It was nothing but evil. She knew the mess that was back there. Why in the world would she do it? But how many of us would be a pillar of salt? Oh, Jesus. We want to look at the glory. We want the glory. We want the glory of God revealed in us and through us by his Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, change Make us hungry. Make us desperate. Oh, God, let us not sit here and be the same day after day. Oh, but, Father, go from glory to glory, no longer staying the same. Father, change. Father, a people that will press in until we touch the realms of heaven, and then we press in until we touch the realms of heaven in a deeper way, in a deeper way, in a deeper way. Oh, God, we go on into the depths of the realms of your glory, the realms of your presence. Jesus. Oh, precious Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness <laughs> exceeding glory. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He has made us His righteousness. Oh, freely given freely given, freely imparted. We have been made partakers of this holy, divine nature just because He's so good. All we have to do is receive. We don't have to do any merits. We don't have to work our way up to be able to receive. We don't have to make ourselves acceptable to God. All we have to do is say, I'm hungry, Lord. I want more Jesus. I want more Jesus. I don't want to sit here, service after service, and just listen. Oh, God, we have listened so long. We've heard so long. We want to apply. We want to live. We want to walk out. Your glory, Father. Oh, Jesus, we want your glory manifested in us, oh, God. We are desperate to, to go deeper, Father. We will not stay the same. We will not be held captive by any deception or trick of the enemy that holds us back, that keeps us busy, that keeps us busy with the things of this life. We should first be busy 
with beholding Him in His glory. Whoo, hallelujah. Look at that. Much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which is made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remains is glorious, is glorious. There is something absolutely amazing to me about gazing upon his word and just, do you ever just get raptured on one scripture and you're just stuck there reading it over and over again? Just saying, oh, Father, make me partaker. Make me partaker. Father, I don't want to be one that hears. I want to be afraid of being a hearer and not a doer. I want to tremble at your word. I want to take it and believe it, and believing it is acting upon it. When you know you really believe it is when you act upon it. When you work it out by what you do. When you are partaker. He's given us all of this. And he's so good. He's so good to us. He works with us and works with us while we're growing up. And he's trying to bring us in to that place of maturity so he can activate us. And then, you know, it took the disciples three years before he anointed them and left it all with them, just turned it over to them. Three years. The Chinese, they look at the scripture, three years, they act upon it. So they train up the missionaries. Well, immediately they get saved you go into training get ready to go out and be sent out be martyrs for Jesus they just go straight in to Holy Ghost boot camp getting ready but so many of us in the Western world you know the Lord's looking at that point he can activate us and we stay two years old and two years old and two years old and three years old and four years old and regress back to one years old and he has to start all over with us. He has to form Christ in us again because we got too busy sitting on our protoplasm, I believe, and not participating in the realms of glory that he's called us over into. We want to get up from this place tonight. And we want to take the impartation of the Holy Spirit, what he has spoken to us as we worshiped him here tonight, what he has said, the, the, the things that he is saying to the church right now, and we want to move in them. We want to move in them tomorrow. We want to participate on whatever level we're at. We want to participate with this glory and say, I will not hold on to my life in anything. I will not walk in self-preservation and take care of me. But I will move out in what the Holy Ghost is doing. I will move out. Like I was talking about with Josiah, part of my responsibility is to train my grandchildren up in the realms of glory, to teach them the things of the kingdom. I taught them to my children. By the time my children went to the little private Christian school, they knew the Word of God so thoroughly. And you know, David, in, in, in the third grade, he was teaching the teachers the Word of God. He had them scared to death. Uh, my friend was a secretary of the school, and David's teacher ran into there and says, I, I think this kid's from a cult. He's saying stuff that I've never even heard before. She says, don't worry. I'm friends with her mother. And what he says, count on it, it's true. He knows what he's talking about. And, you know, the kids at 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, they could out-preach any Sunday school teacher, and you better know your lesson before you step in the class because they're going to straighten you out about it. <laughs> They'll make sure you stick in with the Word of God. And so, you know, in teaching Josiah and you know, talking to him, because he's my little evangelist, the Lord's anointed him to be an evangelist. So I get on my knees and I ask the Lord what they're supposed to be doing and what their call is. And I'm going to even do better with my grandkids than I did my children. Even though, I mean, my children are the most phenomenal children on the planet. You can't get better if you ask me. 
call of God anointed on every one of their lives, and I see them in the eternal purpose of God acting it out. Hallelujah. And so little Josiah, you know, I'm teaching him about evangelism and, and the need to reach the loss. So we're in a, in, in a, a place of business, and he goes, Nani, Nani, he's three, Nani, do all these people in here know about Jesus? And I looked around, I was in a hurry. I was busy. I had to get to the next thing. And I said, probably not. He goes, well, let's get busy. We got to get started. We got to get to all the islands because I want Jesus to come. Because I was telling him of the splendor of heaven, the glory of heaven, the glory and the presence of God, and he couldn't wait. He couldn't wait to go see that glory. We can participate with that glory right here. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I mean, I tell you what, if everybody was about to explode like I am, I think people would be running around the building right now. Oh, Jesus. And it would be fine with me if you did. Because you know what? As I said this morning, David didn't hold back. And we hold back and we try to be too dignified too much of the time. Well, I don't do too well with that. But anyway, the Lord's working on me because there's a place for it. But anyway, His presence is more important. His glory, who He is, and participating with Him, letting Him explode His glory on the inside of you. And then you moving, you moving, you moving with the Spirit of the day. What is the Holy Ghost doing today? What is He doing? Are you following Him? You know, we have to go into Romans chapter 8. And I know that many of you in here can quote it. But how many of us in here are completely walking it out? We're going to grab this, people. There's going to be a change. There's going to be a change in every heart. There's going to be a change in every person. We're going to take it up. We're going to take it up to another level. None of us are going to be left behind. Not one of us are going to be left behind. Not one of us are going to be left behind. We're going after the glory of the realms of the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus, we're not going to be left behind. We will not. We will not. Not one person. And we call. We call anyone back that has been discouraged. We call them back in Jesus' name. We call anyone back that got taken out by the snare of the enemy, set too far on the back row. I'm sorry, people, if you're sitting on the back row. I got to be on that front. I got to be on the front row. I got to be rapturing. I don't, I, you know, sometimes I sit on the second row. I don't like it. You know, sometimes I help out with the grandbabies on the third and fourth row, and I think, how in the world do people sit back there? You don't know what you're missing out on the front row. We might have to start selling tickets for the front row. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. I, th I did. I've had visions of just making one big, huge front row. Maybe, maybe four. I thought, well, maybe four rows back. I've envisioned this. I've laid in bed. I'm like, you know, those poor people that have to be way on the back row. I can't believe they're not fighting for the front row, you know, trying to get up close. And I'm like, maybe four rows back and we could just make a big round. I totally was envisioning this. I'm not kidding. You know, in the next building, how we could just get everybody up close because we want everybody to come in. Come in to the realms of this glory. Come into this fellowship. Activate and move by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, the Almighty, the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God that we have been given. Amazing that Father would love us so much with all of our mistakes and our mess ups. All you got to do is say, Jesus, forgive me and come on back into the realms of glory. And stay there. Don't go back out. Don't go back out. Stay in the realms of the glory. Don't let the enemy lie to you and beat you up and tell you well, you just didn't, you didn't follow the rules today. Here was your list. Do, 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 and you didn't, you didn't do it right. And so you're messed up. I mean, people get all caught up in condemnation. I know. I deal with it continually. They get caught up in their ability and in their selves. Just say, I don't care what comes or goes. I belong to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
I belong to the great I am. I'm not going outside. I'm not going outside of it. I'm staying right here. And the enemy's not pushing me around and telling me I'm not worthy because he was worthy. Worthy is the lamb and him alone was worthy. And he made me worthy by his blood because he was worthy. Because he's worthy, I'm worthy. Only because he's worthy or else none of us would ever be able to come in and receive. Praise you, Jesus. And we start right off in Romans chapter 1, I mean chapter 8, verse 1, with that. There is therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's the key right there, who walk not after the flesh. There's now, therefore, no condemnation. Say, I'm walking after the Spirit. I'm no longer going to walk after my own ability that will hook me up with the powers of darkness because that's what happens. When we get away from walking over in the realms of God and the realms of the Spirit and the realms of glory and we get over into our ability, the enemy comes and goes like a roaring lion. Then he has power. Until then, he has no authority. He has no power over you. If you're staying in the realms of the Holy Spirit, he can roar, he can scream, he can yell, he can shout, he can, he can throw things at you, he can say the sky is falling, and you so caught up in Jesus, you can't even hear him. Because you're not of him. Always willing to stay in that place of humility before him. Oh. I mean, if, if you go out for a second, just get right back in. Just jump right back in. Oh, don't stay out. Don't beat yourself up and say, I got to do this or that or the other to get back in. I got to fix it. Man's ability. Getting out the hammer and the screwdriver and getting under a car with a hammer and a screwdriver. And that's going to do a whole lot. That's what my mama did, though. You know, my dad would be off on the evangelistic field, preaching somewhere, and the car would break down. So she would, she would take the hammer, the screwdriver, and a bottle of oil. Olive oil. Not oil to put in the car. Olive oil. And she would go, and she would lift the lid on the car. And she'd take that hammer... And she would say, in the name of Jesus, work. And she'd pour that oil on it and she'd stick the screwdriver here and there. And she would pound on it. And then she'd go over and get in the car and put the key in the ignition and start it up. She was acting out her faith with a hammer and a screwdriver and a bottle of oil anointed that thing. <laughs> I tell you what, it works. It works. I tell you, Father will bless your act in moving out in faith. Mama had to get the kids to school. She had to be able to go buy groceries. Daddy was off who knows where he was all the time, always gone on the road in, in, in the ministry. And, you know, my little five-foot-two mama raised Six kids, basically by herself. And I tell you, we're full of faith and power. And I see those that aren't flowing in that right now. I see them in the eternal purposes of God. And they're going to flow. They have to flow. My mama said, and she's up there right by Jesus going, Intercede! 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 <laughs> she's a tenacious person. We used to, we used to say about mama, she was, um, she was like a bulldog. Once she bit down and got a grip, Forget about it. She ain't letting go. And so just because she went on over into heaven doesn't mean she doesn't still stay right at it. Hallelujah. But I tell you, it works. Faith works. You, act, you activate your faith. You know, while we're talking about cars, I've got to tell you about our faith van. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm on this, but we're just going to talk about it. Because some of you might need to activate your faith as you're learning to take... To take uh, a deeper place in finances to have what you need. Well, I bought this van at an auction. I went into auction. I was praying in the Holy Ghost. I wanted a van because we were traveling. 
quite a bit at that time. We would um, drive from the Gulf Coast out here to San Diego straight through. David and I would do that with the three kids. And so, you know, that's, 30, that's 32 hours, 34 hours, something like that. And we'd drive straight through here. And I wanted something comfortable where the kids could lay down and, you know, we could take a nap back and forth. So anyway, except I bought this van in, Ke uh, in Texas. Sorry about that. So we were driving from Texas back, back and forth here. But we drove from Mississippi out to here too. Anyway, that's a long story, but we don't go there. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, we happened to be at one of Rodney's meetings in Florida with this van that I bought by the Holy Ghost at an auction. I prayed over this van. I prayed, Lord, what do you want me to get? And I stood there and I bid on this van and it's like nobody else could bid. I bid on the van. I got the van for unbelievable price. And it had, you know, the nice seats that lay down. And we went camping with that van one time, Ruth. You remember when you were real tiny? You remember that? Anyway, we all slept in the van. We were supposed to go camping outside and everybody's supposed to sleep in the tents. And Pastor Mark got to talking about all the bears, so we stayed in the van. <laughs> But, you know, one time we were in Florida. There was so many, there's so many things I could tell you about that van. But we were in Florida, and it started shaking. The whole van just started shaking like this. So, we, you know, we're driving down the road. And so we, we're, we're getting ready to leave Tampa. The meetings are over, and the van's shaking, and we're just like, Lord, what do we do? And we came out of the meeting, and we wanted to leave that night and head on back to the Gulf Coast. And so I laid my hand on the dashboard. And I said, Father, can we go? Will it be all right? And what's wrong with the van? And the Lord spoke to me. Said, yes, you can go, and it's the motor mount. Well, I didn't even know a car had a motor mount. I didn't know what a motor mount was. But it sounded good. And so... We drove the van do, 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 all the way to Mississippi. I don't know how many hours that was. But anyway, we get there, and I said, well, honey, fix the motor mount, because he can do all that kind of stuff. He can fix anything. I give him everything to fix. And um, so he, you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do it too. That's how I taught my kids. I, I homeschooled my kids. I did not have the ability to homeschool my kids. But if we ever got to a place, I'm telling two stories at once now, but if we ever got to a place that we couldn't do something, we'd stop and pray. And we'd pray in the Holy Ghost. And we would pray till it came, we got the divine download. And I'd go, oh, okay, here, here we go. This is how we do it. And that's how I taught my kids math. By the Holy Ghost. Time after time, you can ask them. Because we can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Because you know what? That day, the first thing we did is we put the Word in us. We filled ourselves with the anointing of the Word. Some days we would forget about doing the rest of the schoolwork because we'd get so caught up in the glory of the Word. And we'd just do the Word all day long. And I figured that was math, English, science, <laughs> history, language, writing, spelling. We had it all. Equivalent to high school, you know, at least. Well, no, it's, it, it's doctorate's degree and beyond. But anyway, so I didn't forget about the van. So we get back to Mississippi, and I'm saying, honey, um, fix the motor mount. He says, it's not the motor mount. And I'm going to tell on him it would be okay because he can laugh about it now. It's been a long time ago. And he said, it's not the motor bounce. So he goes, I think it's this. And so he goes and he gets the part and he changes it out. And I'm like, honey, why do you want to waste money? God told me it's the motor mount. And he said, honey, it wasn't that part, but it's not the motor mount. So, you know, my dad was a man of faith, so, or is a man of faith. So I thought, well, I'll tell him and he'll, he'll be with me on it. And I said, dad, this is what's going on. The Lord told me it was the motor mount. He goes, honey, it's not the motor mount. See, the problem was is they knew too much. They knew too much about cars. They knew how to fix stuff. I didn't know. I was like my mama. Take the hammer, the oil, and the screwdriver. I followed her example more than once. What she does works. And so he fixed about three parts. And I'm like, could we please fix the motor mount now? So he finally gets takes everything apart. I think he didn't want to take it apart to that extent. And he gets in there and he goes, 
It's the motor mount. <laughs> we fixed the motor mount. The van was fine. It was so amazing. That van took us all over from the extreme west coast to the extreme east coast. We did all kinds of things with it. I, you know, I bought that thing for almost nothing. We ended up making so much money off of that van, like three times the amount I paid for it by the time we sold it after we got done with tires that didn't go bald. With my son, when I stopped one time, I was going to minister down on the border of Mexico. I had some meetings down there. And so we were headed on down because my husband was working, so we were headed on down. And so we pulled up to the gas station, and it was a diesel van with the glow plugs. I don't know if anybody's had one of those. Don't ever get one. Those glow plugs are a pain. You know, they got new diesels. Don't, you know. But anyway, it was a blessed van. But uh, so my son jumps out. He's going to fill up the tank, and he puts gasoline in the diesel. And you can ask anyone, you put gasoline in a diesel, and it's toast. It's over. And we're driving for miles and miles, and it's going, boom, 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 making all kinds of noise. <laughs> and I'm like, son, what did you put in this car? Well, I don't know, Mom. <laughs> and I'm like, did you look and make sure that you put diesel? Well, I think I did. Well, he put gas in. We get there. My husband gets there. He opens the thing. <clears throat> we kept going. The car's supposed to die dead. It's not supposed to continue. We keep going till we get to our destination because we got the Holy Ghost. And everything has to work when you got him on your side. So my husband opens up the uh, gas tank, and he smells, and he goes, Oh, it's gas. And so... He drains it out, and we, and we just filled it back up with diesel, and we just kept driving it. And, I mean, we went to get it checked out, and the guy goes, you're kidding me, you, are, you drove this there, and then you drove it back, and you put gasoline in it, and it's driving. And he's like, the diesel mechanic, he's like, that ain't supposed to work. That ain't supposed to happen. So he didn't do anything to our van, and we didn't do anything to the van, and we just kept going on. And one time we were, t I have to keep telling you about this miracle van that we sold for about three times the price, you know, but we ended up getting three times the amount of money out of it altogether, but there's a lot of stories in that, how we ended up getting all that money. But anyway, <clears throat> and just going on, we were driving it out here one time from Mississippi, from uh, Texas, and when, when we weren't here for a little short season, we had to come out. <laughs> we half lived here and half lived in Texas, why the Lord had us here. And um, I don't even know what broke that time, but it was the axle or something that holds the wheel on. And it, you know, my son was driving. My eldest son was driving at that point. And that breaks off, and it's just hanging on there by a thread. And we had a semi passing us, and we felt, we all felt the clunk. And there was a semi in front of us, beside us, and behind us. And so as soon as we could, we got over to the, side of the road, they come and they towed us, and the guy was just like as white as a sheet. He was just like, this is unbelievable that you guys are alive. He goes, I'm looking at ghosts right now. He goes, because that thing was just sitting on a piece of metal. He said, there's no way it would have kept from just breaking and that, ju that van just flipping and rolling all over the highway. Semi behind us, semi beside us, and semi in front of us. You remember those times when the angel of the Lord is all around you. This is how God takes care of your stuff. And he takes care of you when you walk with him and you're in his eternal purposes. You don't want anything to hinder your prayers. You don't want anything to hinder you walking over in the realms of glory. You know, you get in a good fight with your husband or your wife on the way to church. The police might pull you over and then the Lord give you a good spanking. You don't want things to hinder you. You want to stay over in the realms of glory, amen? <laughs> oh. And so, you know, and then on top of that, one time I was driving it out here and I was tired. We had been driving straight through and I forgot to check the water. 
and I torqued the engine. Well, we didn't put another radiator in it. We drove it on to California. They said, it's got to have a new radiator. You've blown the head gaskets, and you've done this, you've done that. You know, if you've ever got your radiator boiling hot to where you, you know, steam's coming out everywhere, and you know at that point you must pull over, it's serious. <laughs> and my husband loves me anyway, but that thing was, it was just blessed. And, and we drove, he came, he had to fly out and meet us that time because we drove, we were driving out without him. He had to fly out and meet us and he just, in the name of Jesus, we're, you know, the, the thing's going to be fine. This thing's been so fine. It's going to continue to be fine. And he prayed and we got the rest of the way out to San Diego and then we drove it all the way back to Texas. We never did fix anything on that van. It was just so blessed. See, that's living in the miracle provision of God. And every bit of this is true. You can ask my children. You can ask my husband. You can ask, you can ask my dad. He knows it all. He would just laugh about it. So we've got plenty of witnesses that I am not up here. It sounds like I'm lying, but I am not. This is how you live in the realms of the Spirit. You just trust God with what you've got, and he'll make it bigger and better. Hallelujah, Jesus. We want to stay over in the realms of the Spirit. I tell you, for some reason, the anointing of the Lord was on that. Somebody's going to need to use, there's going to be a lot of people need to use that. You know, you just, you take a hold of faith in God. And you see the multiplication. You see the preservation. You see the God preserving whatever you have. You see God take everything you have and explode it into a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. You pray over it. You command it to be healed. I prayed, over, I prayed over my vehicles many times and commanded them to be healed. Because Mama did. You know, I, the Toyota I drive, it's got nearly 200,000 miles on it right now. Um, <clears throat> they told me, I don't know, a long time ago that the radi radiator was bad. We prayed over that thing. We never did change that radiator. That was probably over 100,000 miles ago. We ain't changing nothing on that van except tires, I mean that car, except tires a couple of times. And, you know, brakes here and there. Because God, because God, he'll take care of you. He cares about all that you have need of. He will provide your food. He is your provision. He will bless everything that you have. You just stay over here in the covenant of it and believe it. Confess. Confess the truth and not a lie. Keep your heart over in the realms of faith and be positive in God, not positive thinking in man and man's ability because this is not going to get you nowhere. You'll end up in the nut house. <laughs> but be positive in the word of the Lord. Believe it. Act upon it. Walk it out. And I was over here in Romans chapter 8, and it is, what time? There is therefore now no condemnation, I read that, to them that are in Christ Jesus. Now are we ready, hallelujah. We don't walk after the flesh, but we walk after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free, free from the law of sin and death. We are free. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. You are not held to walk in, in your own ability. You're not held to be under the bondage of sin. You are free from the powers of darkness. And if you feel like the enemy's got a grip on you somewhere, then you just say, In the name of Jesus, through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, I paint myself with the blood of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you cleanse me and you wash me from all of my sins. And then the enemy has to take a hike. He'll take off running like a scalded dog with his tail between his legs. He will take off. And like they say in Texas, you'll see him running away for three days. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you have all power and authority over the enemy. Stop letting the enemy run over you. Stop it. Stop letting the enemy mess with your stuff. 
Stop. Stop letting the enemy mess with you. He that is on the inside of you is greater. He's greater. He's greater. He's greater. He's greater. Than in any of your circumstances. Hallelujah. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through man's ability, through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. He came that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are in the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are in the Spirit do mind the things of the Spirit. We're Spirit-minded. We're Spirit-minded people. We're going to live over here in the realms of the Spirit. We're going to let God take us, use us, and glorify His name through us in the ends of, to the ends of the earth, wherever He will take us. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I give you all, all of my life. Take no thought for your life. What you should eat, what you should wear, what you put on. But let the Father take the thought. He cares. He cares for what you have need of. He just wants you participating with Him in what you do. He wants you to let go of your life and trust Him and let Him use you. Take no thought. Don't even take thought for what you're going to say, but just say, Father, by the Holy Ghost, speak through me. Speak through me right now. Use me. You don't have to run home and get your Bible so you can tell somebody, look up the Scriptures and show somebody the Word. Let it be living on the inside of you and come out of you like a river and touch that dry and thirsty person that needs that river that is flowing out of you. Hallelujah. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Anybody lacking some peace? You're lacking peace in your life. Well, if you're a saint of God, you're not supposed to be. You are not supposed to be lacking peace. Get on over here in the realms of glory. You, it doesn't matter what storm is raging. You don't want to be those of little faith. You don't want to be those that doubt. You don't want to be those that's waking up Jesus and going, We're going to die! Help! He's like, Hello! How long have I been with you? What have you seen so far? Do you not know? And then he tells the, the sea to be still, and they're just like, What manner of man is this? I tell you what, when people look at us and they say, what manner of man, what manner of woman is this? You've got their attention to give them the gospel. You've got their ear to give them the word of God. And we're, we that say that we are his are to walk even as he walked. In all that glory and all that splendor that he walked in, God has called us to walk in it. Now we're going to get up, saints. We're going to get up. We're not going to sit anymore. We're not going to just listen again. We're not going to listen just again. There's people here that need to be sitting here listening because they're new in the things of the kingdom and they need to be rooted and grounded in the Word of God. But those of us that have been here and we've listened and we've heard, we're going to grow. We're going to change. We're going to move out in what the Holy Spirit's saying. We're going to be partakers. Now it's time. It's time to move out. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait till you get any older. Age is not any, anything to God. A yielded, a yielded heart, a yielded spirit is all you need. Here, Jacob, he's only, he's only eight years old. And as David and Heather were out ministering, Jacob's just caught up in the worship. You know, he, you know, once in a while he's a little boy and gets a little rowdy and rambunctious and carries on a little bit, but he was just caught up in the worship.
and the power of God just touched him. And he was just, you know, Jacob, ever since he was tiny, I didn't even think he was two years old yet. I'd find him down on his knees praying. And, that, you know, and he's all curled up down on his face. And I'm like, is he okay? And I'm like, honey, are you okay? He goes, I'm playing. <laughs> and I remember he's like about three, and he's on his knees, and he's just going after him. And I said, Jacob, what's, what's going on? Are you okay? He goes, didn't Pastor Mark tell everybody to get on their knees and pray? I'm praying. And that's what he'd tell me every time I'd find him. I'm praying. So here he is. He's in the meetings that David and Heather were in up in, in Washington. And he's, he's praying. And he's walking around. And he's just, he's just praying out, crying out to the Father in the altar service. And at one point, he hollers out, Jesus! And you know, I don't know what all he was saying. I couldn't hear everything, and David and Heather hadn't caught me up on the whole deal. But then the next night, because I got to watch it, the next night, this, uh, this man that is a music minister that was, came down from Alaska for the meetings, he said that as, ja- he, as he was seeing Jacob worship the Lord and getting rapture on over, and then the kid just praying and just entering in into the realms of glory. And after hours of them being there, and he's watching this little eight-year-old plugged in like that, he says he was, he was thinking about how God had captivated his heart as a young child and had touched him. And he didn't exactly know how, what to do with it. And, and he said, but he, he was just so touched by Jacob. And he said, as Jacob yelled out, Jesus, the fire of God hit him and just smashed him under the glory. He was just gone. And I mean, the next night, he was still literally vibrating under the power of God. He could hardly talk. He was so under the anointing and the power of God. God doesn't care how old you are. Just move. Move out. Because if you don't, if you don't move out now, if you don't activate now, and you sit now, you'll sit 30 years from now. You'll still be sitting. Activate. Move in God. Do something in God. Don't let the enemy mess around and play with your life. And I'm talking right now to some of the young people in this place. Little Faith. She was born and named Faith. So she could be a woman of faith and little faith. We want to see her activated and moving now in the things of the kingdom. And I guarantee you, faith can tell you about Jesus. For what she knows, she can bring somebody, one of her friends, somebody she meets in the park, to Jesus. That's what we want to be doing is flowing in the realms of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, 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 Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, Father, we don't want anybody sitting here going, I'm tired, worn out, and want to go home. And how long is the meeting going to go? And, you know, maybe I won't come Wednesday night because I got things to do. Jesus, Jesus. You know, the Father is continually striving with you trying to bring you on over. He wants you to see this glorious realm of his presence. And he wants you to live in it and walk it out. So he's continually saying, listen, listen, come on over here. Here. And move. Move. I'm going to read a little bit more here. Because the carnal mind is the em, 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 it's enmity with God. It's the enemy of God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So, th- so then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness, because that's who he's made us. If he's in you, you're alive in him. If he's in you, the spirit's living and moving. He doesn't stand around. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit that moved upon the waters and created and began to speak 
as the word spoke, he began to move and create all things that are created. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit on the inside of you that's moving with the Father, moving with the Son, moving in you and bringing the righteousness of God in you and through you to the nations of the world. This Spirit, this Spirit, this Spirit, this Spirit that He's freely given. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that no longer and I've said this several times, no longer that we sit by and we don't activate in you. He, you know, we don't have to be the one that comes up here and ministers behind the platform. We, our lives are to be a testimony every day in how we live. You know, my dad preached all over the place and my mom went with him and she just talked to the few people here quietly. She was, you know, never seen too much in the front. She just, you know, let dad preach and she raised up children to serve the Lord and she just talked to the people and always there. Everywhere I go, every person I talk to that knew my mom, they go, well, we love your dad and he preached well, but your mom, your mom, she was so precious. She so touched our lives. She lived it. She lived it. Your dad preached it, but we saw it in your mom. We saw Jesus. Your mom was just so amazing in her life. She very rarely got behind the pulpit and preached. But her life was such a testimony. And, you know, I've been blown away at the people. I'm like, Mom called you and talked to you on a regular, regular basis too? Oh, yeah. Anytime I needed anything, it's just like she would call me up and she knew that I was going to be in need. And she would pray with me. And God would meet the need. She was there for me all the time. And I'm like, you too? And you too? And it's just amazing. And Mama never looked like she did a whole lot in the kingdom. And I'm finding out she did a whole lot more than a lot of people I've ever known about. Because I keep finding all the people that were impacted by her. And Mom never shouted and tooted her own horn and told anybody about it. It was just her phone call when nobody else was around, to this person, that person, ministering to them, being that encouragement, being that strength, impacting someone's life, helping them to go on with Jesus, teaching them the Word of God, living out the gospel, living out and walking out the gospel. How many people are reading your life? How many people are reading the testimony that you live, that you live before them? Can you walk away from every person that you talk to and every person that you meet and then somehow be impacted? If nothing else, they just go, there was something about that person because the glory's on you. Never leaving anybody on a sour note. Ever. Hallelujah. Because Jesus don't leave us on a sour note. And boy, it's quiet here tonight. <laughs> well, I better get everybody moving. Let's just stand up and... Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Anybody that the Father has touched tonight, we'd like you to come up and we'd like, we'd like to pray with you. And anybody that needs prayer for any reason, this is normally miracle healing night. But I could not get away from preaching on, on the Spirit. I, um, I looked at healing notes that I had gotten ready and I just couldn't, I couldn't even go there. And I, I was just like, Lord, what do you want me to preach on? And I was toiling with it. And I couldn't get away from this. And this, Because this is what the Father's saying. He's wanting us moving in Him. Because I'm telling you people, He's coming. He's coming. The King is coming. The King is coming. Oh, oh hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm thinking of that song. I just heard the trumpet sounding. And soon His face I'll see. Oh, glory to your name. Everybody's going to stop what they're doing. The busyness is going to come to an end because the king is coming. The king's coming. So the things that have got you so occupied, why do they got you occupied when you should be getting ready for the king to come? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. If anybody needs prayer, we want to pray with you. And as David worships, we're going to just worship together. And anybody wants prayer, we want to pray with you. Otherwise, you guys can hug each other and... Um, encourage each other and strengthen each other in ministering 
In Jesus' name. When I was um, worshiping the Lord, and just as Pastor Geneva came up tonight, the Lord spoke so very, very, very clearly that there are souls here tonight. Your soul is weighing in the balance. You cannot play around any longer. These assailing powers of darkness that are speaking to your mind, and there's someone right now watching by the web, the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. He's delivering you. You be, you be set free right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In Jesus' name. You know exactly who you are. The Holy Spirit's doing it. Amen. You're free. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. And it's there's people indeed. here right now that the enemy has tried to convince you that you can't come in. And it's a lie. It's a stinking lie. Just as Pastor Geneva spoke tonight, it's through the blood. There's not a list. It's through the blood. You come in and you take your position that God has given you. And Amen. you do not back down. You Amen. come tonight, you come forward because the stronghold of the enemy is broken off your life as you just step out. That's You're right. You're no longer going to deal with this. There's enough power in this place to set you completely free because it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. The blood of Jesus Christ, it's enough, it's sufficient. You just put your faith there. You humble yourself now. You humble yourself. The Lord is calling you. Come. Do not tarry. Do not tarry. Amen. Come now. Come Amen. now. Amen. Whoever you are, you know the enemy is no longer going to do this to you any longer. Amen. You're a mighty man of God. You are a mighty man of God. You Amen. are a mighty man of God. And weighing in the balance, it means that you keep holding back on God. You're just doing your thing. You're not pressing in to the things of the kingdom. And you just continue on and on and on with doing your own thing. And you've grown cold and you've grown away from God. And, you know, you may come into the church and you may sit in the church. And, you know, you may be pleasing your parents or making everybody else think that it's okay with you. But you've grown away, from, you've grown cold and away from God. And Father has been bidding both this morning and tonight for you to come, for you to come and you to deal with the things that are going on in your life and you to get on fire again for Jesus, you to get red hot and passionate for the Father. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right now, right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Is there anybody that still wants to come? I tell you what, we're not going to even close the altar. We're going to begin to, to pray with people as David and Emily worship. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Take my life. And you can come up at any time. But don't walk out. Don't walk out holding the things in your life and in your heart where you haven't just stepped out in God and you've been just doing your own thing. Don't hold on to that anymore. When you have all of heaven right here at your disposal. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. 